The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN Wednesday morning, 9.06 a.m. We got about 24 minutes to go until the opening bell and we got markets. If you bought the dip yesterday, folks, we're talking about pushing almost a full percent above where we're trading at. You get the S&Ps coming into the opening bell up seven points right now at 44.01. NASDAQ tech stocks trading higher as well. We almost get it all back. Quite the move you trade from the NASDAQ 100. Early yesterday, you're above 15,100. You trade down about 2% from the highs of the session pre-market to the lows we made at about 1.30 in the afternoon yesterday in those tech stocks. Interesting you get that type of action coming into the earnings of the three of the biggest companies out there in the world, folks, with Apple, Microsoft, and Google, all after the bell last night. All of them putting out pretty staggering strong numbers in a big way. We'll jump over to Apple. Let's just kick it off. Apple, biggest company in the world. We're down only a dollar right now. I say only a dollar. You had some volatility after the bell last night. They come out with their numbers. You spike as high as 149. You make it down to 142.50. We've clawed back some of those losses in the overnight session. Now, jumping right into it, Apple warns that growth will slow after record second setting sales. Part of the growth slow may be. Uh, some chip shortages, which is hitting a lot of companies out there. Apple finally indicating that it could hit them as well. A remarkable quarter when you talk about it. Third quarter, how about uh, sales gain of 36%, revenue of 81.4 billion. Market was looking for 73.8. Uh, but the company's lack of specific guidance for the fourth quarter continued to trend. It started when COVID first struck. I mean, you got to love it. These companies making the most of the opportunity to pull their guidance. I was saying during the beginning of COVID, if you were an executive that was not pulling your guidance at that time, you just weren't doing a good job. There was no way you should have guidance out this time. Right now, you should probably have some guidance. All right. There's a lot of uncertainty in the world, but there's a lot of uncertainty in the world, period. Uh, these companies have a general idea to provide some guidance. Uh, for sure. For now, business is booming. The iPhone, Apple's core product, how about growing about 50% to almost $40 billion last quarter. Market was looking for just shy of $35 billion. Third quarter is typically one of Apple's slowest periods with consumers holding out for a new iPhone launch around September usually. Uh, the iPhone 12, though, appearing to help that in a big way. But there you go, supply constraints. So they report $7.37 billion, or 12% growth in revenue for the iPad. Market was only looking for 7.13. They de debuted the new iPad Pro models in April. Uh, let's see. Yes, but here we go. So they debuted the new iPod, Pro, iPad Pro models in April, but the line was constrained due to problems building new screens for the larger models. Seeing some supply constraints. They previously warned revenue would take a $3 billion to $4 billion hit because of chip shortages. Uh, but that was not as bad as they envisioned. Getting into it. Yeah, so that was the hit on Apple. Apple, all things considered, folks, you take a look at Apple. Apple's got about 17 billion shares outstanding. We're trading at 145 right now. I mean, you back this up, we had the high in January, 145.09, you're still above that area. This would be an all-time record high outside of the last two weeks of trading of Apple, all things considered. We were just trading at 123 as of last month. 123 as of last month. We're going to open above 145 for Apple shares. All right, jumping over to Microsoft. Now, Microsoft, what was interesting, the first move last night, Microsoft was in negative territory, but they said that they were going to provide forecasts and guidance on the conference call. Finally, the conference call, roll, call rolls around. They get the guidance they were looking for. You trade back to positive prices. You got Microsoft up about $3 on their numbers. Now, jumping in, into actually what they had to say in terms of Microsoft here, they beat estimates by 25 cents. Earnings of 217 a share. Revenue beat estimates as well. Strong growth in the company's cloud computing. We'll get into this a little bit more in the second half of the program. Um, but they continue to benefit in a big way. Microsoft shares Google. 
probably the winner. Uh, the strongest on their heel, the heels of their acceleration. Google trades from 27.35 up to 28.19. We give back some of those gains. We're trading at 27.71 right now. Now I got an interesting article out here from Apple, uh, from Bloomberg, talking about Apple and Google are winning big, but one is about to pull ahead. Uh, yes, this is an opinion piece. Okay, from them, of course, talking about one pulling ahead of the other. I, they make a good comparison here, though, in terms of the consistency of where their revenue match up. Pretty similar numbers when you get into it. Um, so this was last night. They're talking about both companies reported blowout numbers late Tuesday, far exceeds expectations. Apple, the margins that these companies are pulling in are just bonkers in a big way. Uh, Apple posted adjusting earnings of $1.30 a share. Market was looking for $1.01. They had profit in 90 days of $21.7 billion. And uh, yes, that was Apple. Alphabet, this is talking about, generated earnings of 27 while generating income. So Alphabet, I was confused. I call it Google. Either way, it's Alphabet. But Google, they make $18.5 billion. You have Apple makes $21.7 billion. Pretty strong numbers, pretty similar numbers in a big way. But man, you want to see something ridiculous? Look at the search domination still. We all know this is true, but it is remarkable that Google just crushes it um, to the tune of 93%. You know, Bing, Yahoo, Baidu, all the ones basically doing nothing here. And it just goes on beyond digital ads. Google's got their cloud offering, which is also thriving, which Apple is really not in that sector. You have Amazon with Amazon Web Services. You have Microsoft with the Azure. And now you have Google's cloud becoming a formidable number three in that area. Revenue growing 54% in the June quarter from a year earlier. Smaller than AWS and Microsoft's Azure. Clearly a, become a viable third player there. And they talk about the unit. This is talking about Alphabet's Google Cloud offering. Gained a reputation for cutting-edge artificial intelligence tools. Better integration with open-source software technologies than rivals. Not familiar with that. Not sure how Amazon Web Services and Microsoft is allowing a competitor to basically... Uh, eat their lunch for business. Not sure if that is true or not, but nonetheless, something to keep your eye on. And it is. I mean, Google, the one thing that's always interesting about Google is that you got the antitrust concerns, and that is a real argument, folks. Google, in my opinion, is definitely squashing some competition out there. Uh, 60 Minutes did a great story on this going on probably a couple years ago at this point. It's probably gotten even worse. They brought on the founder of Yelp, and he basically said nowadays he could never come up with his company because Google just basically sends every type of search function that you're doing to their own type of – you're basically going in their own rabbit hole. You're not even going to external web pages. The, the, you're entrenched in the Google ecosystem whether you even realize it or not. Most people don't even realize that the search function that they're using is a, is a Google-enabled web page it's sending you to. It's not sending you to the regular web pages, et cetera. He said Yelp couldn't even exist in today's environment on Google, the way that they've monopolized the search function and the, and the display of what they're displaying you on their own results of Google results. Uh, but, man, the market, not too worried about those antitrust concerns right now. You put this thing on a weekly – Boy, since the run in September, you've doubled the share price. We're going to open push in 2800. We were just trading at a price of 1406 back in September, let alone trading at 1000, 1013 to be exact, back in the lows of COVID. You came into COVID at around 14 to 1500 for the price of Google shares this morning. All right, jumping around to what else we got going on. We'll check in. I mean, it's a big day, folks. Could be one of the biggest days uh, of the season where you got the earnings going on, right? We're going to have Microsoft, Google, Alphabet, and Apple opening on their earnings. Boeing, we're going to get into strong numbers for Boeing, continuing to the upside, up about 12 bucks. We get Facebook after the bell tonight. I believe we get PayPal after the bell tonight as well. And it's Fed Day. We got Chairman Powell with a press conference at 2.30. Stay tuned, folks. We'll come back with our man Kevin Hanks from TD Ameritrade Network. We'll be right back. Golden ratios give shape to everything in our world. Represented in the Fibonacci sequence, these special numbers define the patterns that make up our universe. Not even markets can escape the omnipotence of these ratios. Larry Pesavento is a 45-year market veteran who has published nearly a dozen books on the powerful patterns we find in nature and their relationships with the ever-elusive markets. Larry's newsletter, Fibonacci 24-7, will teach you to harness the power of these natural golden ratios in order to create successful trades. Fibonacci 24-7 is designed to teach the tools you need to identify and act on these undeniable and reoccurring patterns. 
Sign up for Larry's newsletter, Fibonacci 24-7, and you will also receive free access to his trading webinar, Trading Strong, Trending Markets. Try out Larry's newsletter risk-free. All of TFNN's newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE, and you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text, either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&Ps up seven points right now. Markets in positive territory. Big week of earnings going on. Of course, we got Fed Day with Chairman Powell. Announcement due at 2 p.m. Eastern time. Press conference to follow at 2.30. Let's jump over to our man, Kevin Hinks. Every trading day, folks, 11 a.m. Eastern time on Tiger TV, the TD Ameritrade Network, Fast Market. Kevin Hinks, Alex Coffey, the team at TD Ameritrade Network, breaking down the market action, setting up hypothetical trades, talking about defined risk in this market. Kevin Hinks, good morning. Good morning, Tommy O'Brien. Yeah, big day that we're about to have here today. Uh, big night of earnings overnight. Big night of earnings after the bell today and tomorrow morning. So, yeah, we are in the middle of a crazy time of year in terms of earnings. But this is what we love. This is like Christmas, Tommy. <laughs> it's uh, pretty remarkable, Kevin. So, of course, we get three of the biggest companies in the whole world last night with Apple, Microsoft, and Google remarkable numbers across the board man some of these companies i was talking to my dad early this morning and i was saying the margins on some of the profits on these companies that they take in man is just mind-boggling tens of billions of dollars every quarter you're seeing pretty strong numbers in terms of all three of them apple barely in the red uh by about a buck 50 buck 80 at this point right now but apple really strong numbers maybe they're going to deal with a little bit of a chip shortage on the supply front uh some strong numbers out of boeing this morning kevin they're not going to be laying anybody off it's seems like we got uh, so a lot of you know a lot of off lofty expectations coming into earnings season right now but man these companies seem to be delivering so far as we're coming into this big week yeah I, I think I mean Apple put up video game numbers and Boeing was able to swing to a profit and stop their layoffs and and reinvigorate their workforce so I think that's good news the fact that you know, the only reason that Apple might trade a little soft today is because it ran 22% into yeah. earnings. And so, and you're right, they did have some, but I mean, the, the numbers that Apple put up are video game numbers, Tommy. I mean, the, it is incredible what this company is doing. So, you know, the only worry about Apple is valuation. Um, when you look at AMD, Microsoft, Alphabet, they're all... Um, 
doing extremely well today. So this is going to be a fun day to trade, that's for sure. The markets are still hesitant as we have a Fed day today. Jerome Powell's going to speak. They're probably going to try to pin him down on some some form of tapering. I expect him to hold the line and not be tied down on tapering. So, um, yeah, today's going to be a great day. And it is interesting, of course, we got Facebook after the bell today. Uh, Facebook, you're trading a little bit higher, probably on some of the tech numbers, maybe on some of the Google numbers. You got Facebook trading from 367. We got a bit ask of about 374. Uh, Going to be challenging right up near the all time highs we had just a couple days ago of 375. So you have Chairman Powell out there today, Kevin. You got a press conference at 230. Uh, not too much really has changed on the fundamental perspective. He's been pretty strong saying that they're going to wait for the data, not really sure that we've reached that point that we got the data that he's going to be uh, too worried about that data do you look for anything for chairman powell today in terms of what he'll be looking for and maybe what the the press conference may follow at 230 no i'm not expecting him to make any headlines today on what he thinks i mean if you're jerome powell you've got a 10-year trading 127 you know that that's not worrisome at all if jerome powell was coming to this meeting with a uh a, a tenure at 2.2, then then we, we, we'd be watching a little closer. I mean, we're going to watch, but I don't expect him to make any news. And frankly, with a tenure at 1.2, he doesn't have to, right? He, he can say that, we're, you know, all we're doing is watching the data and watching overall inflation. And so, so far, he, he's not pressed to, to, to change anything, Tommy. So I'm going to jump over to the VIX, Kevin, real quick. Uh, you got the VIX sitting at about 1873 right now. I've been looking at the VIX. Now, of course, we had that market sell-off on the 19th. VIX spikes to 25. Uh, we almost got it all back and then some within a couple of days. I've been watching the VIX. Do you have a look for, I mean, we got an elevated VIX, it, it, especially when you look at even where we've been. You look at it daily. We had the VIX ticking across with lows of the low 15s. We made it to 1425 down there. The market's continued to rise. We've talked about the skew on some of the options market, but we have an elevated uh, VIX, Kevin, as we really have the market basically sitting at all-time highs on a consistent basis. Does that ever catch your eye when you get the VIX maybe leading the market, uh, possibly, as you got some elevated premium, even as the market plows higher well we always watch vix and we always watch levels of implied volatility and where they are versus historic and recent numbers and so because that's what we do implied volatility uh you know that designates what trade we're going to do on a daily basis so yeah we watch the vix the fact that it's elevated um you know i think that just you know it, it shows that there's uncertainty still lingering out there and there's perceived risk still lingering out there. So VIX is always to be watched and focused on. I think it, you know, there, there's information to be derived from where, where VIX is trading on a daily basis and where it's trading so far today. So I think some of the relief is coming out of this market. But as you know, there's economic data coming out Thursday and Friday and GDP and personal income and outlays. There's still a ton of earnings coming out, so I don't think we're done, and I think VIX is showing that, Tommy. And it's pretty cool because that contributes to the type of premiums you're dealing with in the option market, of course, as well, right? Um, and so we got the earnings market continues, Kevin. We got earnings tonight. What are you guys going to be talking about on Fast Market coming up at 11 o'clock today? Another day of, of full, high-profile earnings releases. Like Folio is going to do a presentation on PayPal, and then we'll look at Facebook and Qualcomm today on Fast Market. Nice. And, man, how about the, the payment sector, right, Kevin? I mean, these things have taken off like rocket ships in a big way. Um, you check out PayPal, man, just going back to get the lows of COVID. You made it down on PayPal to 82 bucks, folks. And this morning, we're going to open above 300. We got a bid ask of about 302. And uh, Shopify, man, makes me think. I mean, just remarkable. You got Shopify out with their numbers. You're trading up to 1579, just staggering in terms of the, the flocking to online payments in a big way. Well, Kevin, we look forward to the program, man. We, we appreciate the education as always. And we'll be watching Fast Market at 11 o'clock coming up today, man. Thanks for having me on, Tommy. Have a great day. 
You too, Kevin. Thanks, man. Folks, tune in every trading day. If you haven't checked it out, this is the week to do it. The way they set up hypothetical trades, the best way to learn how to do something, folks, is to walk it, folks, is to watch it in action. Uh, a great week to do it. We'll see how it shakes out in terms of the earnings coming out today. But let's jump over to Facebook. So Facebook getting a lift on the Google numbers. We're up to about 374 right now this morning. You jump over to the Analyze tab. Now, these numbers are going to be as of the close last night, okay? Option market not trade does not trade overnight so these numbers priced in terms of the expected move priced off the off the implied volatility off the option market last night that will shift on the open this morning but as you see some pretty decent numbers you're talking about almost a five percent move priced in now the expectations are going to rise because you saw the numbers that google put out we'll get into them a little bit later in the program but you got that lift on those numbers as well. A little bit of a different story in terms of the advertising, but nonetheless, it is still online advertising. If Google's crushing it, Facebook, the expectations are going to be increased as well. And you're going to have Facebook opening right near all-time highs, and they're looking at about a $17 move as of last night. We'll see how that changes on the open, and it's still getting a bid. We just got an all-time high tick on Facebook at three seventy-five fifty as this market looks to open at about 4400 on the dot stay tuned folks we'll be right back for the opening bell we get the s p's up by six nasdaq 100 up by 54 green across the board bitcoin up nineteen hundred dollars trading at thirty nine thousand eight thirty five stay tuned folks i'll be right back for the opening bell Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tigers Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tigers Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors tfnn is excited about our new software charting program the art of timing the trade charts in collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, folks. We got markets open. Jumping over to Microsoft, giving back some of the gains. You got Microsoft up about two dollars right now. You're trading at two eighty eight eighty six. Uh, some remarkable statistics when you look at it. And I was talking about the margins. So check out the margins on Microsoft alone. I'm sure they're gangbusters across the board. Like Kevin Hinks was saying, video game numbers. Okay, Microsoft for the full year. This is all right. They just came out with the quarterly numbers. Big numbers in a big way. They had quarterly numbers of earnings of sixteen point five billion. About earnings. Okay. But they took in $165 billion in sales for the year. And of that $165 billion in sales, they made $60 billion in profit. That's like a 40% profit margin on $165 billion in sales. It seems like there should be more competition to get down those profit numbers on that type of a sales number. But these tech companies, they are just remarkable. Now, you add up all three of them, okay? You talk about Google, Alphabet. Uh, Microsoft and Apple, the three companies, now have a market value of around $6 trillion combined. The three of them combined had $57 billion in profit over the three-month period from April to June, excuse me, or about $620 million a day for that period of time from three companies alone. They're pulling in two-thirds of a billion dollars every single day to the bottom line. Whew. Staggering in a big way, as we know. So Microsoft giving back some of the gains, but still, all things considered, when you look at the run these companies have had, I mean, if you're an investor, if you're a long-term investor, right, I mean, you probably just want to say, hold the gains, and you'd be happy. Because you've been in this equity just since the last two months. You've risen to the tune of $45, almost a 20% pop in Microsoft shares. Apple, Apple's got almost 17 billion shares outstanding. You were just trading at 123. Now you're trading at 143. That alone is a $340 billion market capitalization increase just in the last two months alone. And that's factoring in the 2% drop you have today and the drop you had yesterday. You were just at 150. You're trading at 144 right now. You gave back $6. Six dollars in Apple is about a hundred billion dollars wiped off the market capitalization. But folks, when you're dealing with numbers between the three of the companies where you're making six hundred and sixty million dollars every single day in profit, yeah, you better believe the market capitalizations are up there. So Apple's off about two percent. We just pulled up Microsoft, they're barely in the positive right now. Let's check in on Google. Google shares catching a bid. We're up about two percent on Google, trading at twenty seven eighty nine, pulling up the fifteen minute chart. We're trading at twenty seven, yeah. Just coming up to the highs that we had yesterday, about 2,800. Let's jump over to Boeing. So Boeing shares. There's a pop for you. Up about 6% today to 235. Now, Boeing, you know, it's tough to take a position going into an earnings event because, obviously, I was talking to my dad this morning, though. Take a look at this. This may be the opportunity. Get a look at this. Maybe we'd step into it in my newsletter, Rocket Equities and Options. Not sure yet, but it's possible because that's a nice setup, folks. We're right towards the lower boundary of that channel line. You're catching a bid here. You finally have some nice numbers for Boeing. And uh, let's get into the numbers, nice numbers they got for Boeing shares in terms of stocks out there. Um, so they had a surprise profit of 40 cents a share. The markets were looking for an 83 cent loss, revenue topped expectations. And uh, one of the other factors out there is that they are keeping the 140,000 workers that they have on the payroll. It's not going to be laying anybody off. A good indication that they expect business to return to those levels. And if you expect business to return to those levels, right, just putting Boeing on a five year weekly. Uh, you got an area that this thing chopped around in between about 300 and 400. Yeah, you got above that area to 446, but we're trading at 236 right now in Boeing. Even if you trade up to the upper boundary line of that channel line, you're pushing maybe 300. Some lofty expectations doesn't mean it might happen, but Boeing been in the doldrums for a bit. And maybe this is the turnaround quarter as they go to a swing profit as opposed to a loss expected in the market. All right, folks, we got a big day at TFNN as well on top of the earnings that we have going on. If you head on over to the services tab at TFNN, folks, you scroll down to the bottom. Our man Basil Chapman, he's got the second part of his webinar coming up. It starts in 25 minutes, folks. He will be in there, okay, at 10 a.m. Eastern time for the second part of that webinar with his subscribers from 10 till noon talking about the Chapman Wave methodology explained live. Now, the archive of the first section, yeah, you can't attend that right now. That is archived, though, if you meant to check it out. Great time to sign up. You can still check that out. Basil being there from 10 till 12, so he will not be doing his program live next, folks. But you can still sign up for that. $295, but you get a month of his 
opening call newsletter as well. I think that's $148 value right off the bat. Let's check it out. Newsletters, there it is, $149 value. So out of the $295, half of it's the newsletter that you get for free for the month. You get six and a half hour course he did two weeks ago. You get the two hour follow up that he is doing from 10 till 12 today, coming up at 10 o'clock as well. All right, let's jump around to some of the other stocks that we got moving today. Let's check around to some of the other in terms of, we'll finish up Amazon shares. We get their numbers tomorrow. Amazon basically positive by about two tenths, quite a pullback yesterday for Amazon, down more than $100 at one point from 3,700 to below 3,600. As I mentioned, we get Facebook today, Trading higher on the open on Google numbers. Let's check back and see how they're trading. Google up about 1.4%. Apple, a little bit of a drop there for Apple, down to the lows we had overnight, down about 2.4% on their numbers. Microsoft basically flat, giving back some of the gains at about 286 right now for their numbers. PayPal out uh, with their numbers after the bell tonight, basically flat, down about a tenth of a percent so far. And let's jump over to crypto. Bitcoin, how about the acceleration? We end last week at about 32,000. The news that Amazon's going to potentially get into crypto hits over the weekend. You get a short squeeze to the tune of $950 million of forced selling. That sends Bitcoin up to about 38,000. You extend up to about 40,000 overnight on Monday. You climb above those numbers even to 40,940. Now you put Bitcoin on the daily. This area is a critical area, the 30,000, and it's held. We're back up to 40,000. The only thing I'll say, folks, is we've been up to 40,000. That seems to be the cap, and it's not the only time. You back it up to January, that's where we traded lower originally from 40 to 30K. You back it up to June, we trade from 40 to 30K. All right, that's the area we chopped around as well in early May. We're back up to about 40,000. Whether Bitcoin's able to find a bid above that 40,000 price point, we will see. That's been a little bit of a ceiling on a couple occasions for Bitcoin. Let's jump over to Coinbase. On a daily, you got Coinbase going to open. We're already open about 241. The reference price 250 for Coinbase, not quite up to that level just yet, but up 2.7% for Coinbase on the crypto acceleration. And just like that, with the tech stocks giving back some of the gains, we get the market giving back some of the gains as well. We got the all the markets besides the Russell just sneaking into the red right now. Look at the S&P giving up almost 15 points real quick like that. We're down to 43.90. Tech stocks giving up almost 100 points right now. We were up at 15,020 after the opening bell. We're down about 80 points from that level right now, trading at 14,942. Let's jump over to Tesla, see how they're trading after their numbers earlier this week. Basically flat this morning at 644 so far for Tesla numbers. And we'll jump around to some of the commodities. We got gold sitting right at about 1800 right now. You got crude sitting right at around number $72 right now. Silver's trading at 2471 Quite the slide for silver yesterday to negative prices. And notes and bonds. On Fed Day, we got the 10-year right now, negative by about five ticks. And as Kevin Hanks was saying, we got a yield right now, 1.26%. Not bad as the Fed chair takes the helm at 2.30 for his press conference. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be coming back. Perfect day. We're going to be talking to our man, Teddy Kegstad, talking Forex on Fed Day from forex-trading-unlock.com. We'll be talking a little Forex when we get back from this break. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. 
Paperwhite's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got markets giving back some of the gains we had pre-market. S&P negative by six right now. NASDAQ negative by 14. We got the Dow hanging on to gains. Bowen catching a bid. We got the Dow up about 10 points right now. Let's jump over to our man, Teddy Kegstat. Folks, every trading day, you can reach Teddy at forex-trading-unlock.com. We talk to Teddy every Wednesday at 40 past the hour. Teddy Kegstat, happy Fed day. About a, it could be a sleepy Fed day, I'm pretty sure. Okay. I, yeah, not too many. I was just chatting with Kevin Hanks at the beginning of the program saying uh, he's waiting for data, right? We know that. And uh, the data has not arrived yet, at least by his standards. So not too mm -hmm. sure anything surprising may hit the tape there. But nonetheless, we get the press conference at 2.30. What are you looking at in the market this week uh, in the Forex and the general market, Teddy? Well, definitely going to be watching the oil numbers today, but my key thing is to watch the unemployment claims tomorrow. I think unemployment claims tomorrow and next Thursday and unemployment next Friday is going to be, you know, like I've been saying for the past couple months, the, uh, the big economic numbers now are going to be the things that are going to shake up the market because we already know what the Fed's going to say. Absolutely nothing. And then we'll spend a month talking about what they said nothing about, you know. So um, I really wouldn't be watching them. I would be watching the interest rate market. They're kind of quiet today. Um, you know, they spiked higher, you know, a week ago. And as far as dollar strength here, it's kind of interesting. You know, we've been talking about this divergence, which it's definitely there. So if you're a, a dedicated, you know, one type of currency cross trader right now, you really have to focus on that environment. You can't focus on the dollar index, you know, especially when you start to look at a lot of other currencies around the globe and how they're reacting to different things right now. So, I mean, euro, the euro right now, I think, is still going to go back and test its lows. You know, the past two days we had a little dollar rally. Now it's Fed day. You know, it's there's not going to be much action unless they actually say something today, which I don't think is going to happen, you know. So, yeah. but uh, if they do, you know, then obviously we'll have some volatility. It'll be crazy. I would say it's probably going to be a poor trade. I would wait until most likely after tomorrow's uh, economic number, just on the uh, unemployment uh, claims. And I think that'll give us a direction going into next week because that's our guidance right now. We're really, you know, it used to be where you start the markets out as a currency trader on Sunday night and you're pretty much done by Thursday, you know, because Friday's a dead day, you know, by the yeah. time the U.S. markets are open, every, the rest of the world is shut down. 
now it's becoming a different thing because these weekend trades mean a lot and the economic numbers that matter come out at the end of the week <laughs> you know so yeah um now so when you look definitely... for like for instance the the unemployment claims number tomorrow um mm -hmm. are you looking for possibly where you know things are getting a little bit more dire um Yes. At least at least in, you know, where we we hoped would be at this point coming out because of the cases spreading that maybe we start seeing rising numbers and that causes some some stress into the market. Mm -hmm. I think okay. a, a good number would be a flat number. And I think that you're going to see it spike even higher. I see I see unemployment going up. In, in the, on the claims this week and next week. Now, that doesn't mean that the unemployment number on Friday next week is going to be necessarily higher. Sure. There's a little bit, there's going to be a lag on that one. But I really, truly believe right now, I mean, I, I know that things are jamming in Florida right now between tourism and being open with all kinds of stuff. But, you know, I live in Illinois, man, and like St. Louis already went to full mass mandates. There's yeah. all kinds of talk about starting to put restrictions back on. This is not just people making rumors. This is coming from the officials that are calling the shots. Sure. You know, sure. so and I'm betting that especially like if you look at like it's kind of funny, you know, I always tell people it doesn't matter if you're a stock trader or a commodity trader, you got to watch the currencies. I mean, you, you guys watch the equities and earnings all the time. You know that earnings drive the market. That's why the stocks are going as high as they have been doing. But look at companies like Starbucks that are on its highs right now. Coffee is up over 100 percent just in the past, like, you know, few months. OK, the U.S. dollar Brazilian real, you know has been pretty weak, you know, and now it looks like it want the dollar is going to be strong versus that currency over the next few months, which means that Starbucks can can buy that coffee, which will be inflated in price and it won't affect them so much because of the strength in the dollar, you know. But then there's also the fact that they have all the, uh, you know, the drought and stuff like that, that their yields may be down significantly this year. So that it becomes a supply issue. So Starbucks has been running on their earnings, which has been great. Their net, their net income has still been going up slightly over the past couple of years. But if you look at their profit margins, they're going down to next to zero. So if your margins are starting to go to where they're going to hit negative territory, I mean, in October, you're probably going to see the bond market at much lower levels. You're going to see the dollar at much higher levels, which will help some companies, you know, as far as when you're buying stuff overseas, but it's going to kill our exports without yeah. a doubt. You know, yeah. and that's going to start to affect once as profit margins. Those are the things that affect earnings. Once profit margins start to go negative, your earnings start to go down. And then all of a sudden we're going to see a turn, you know, so I could see that right right now we're kind of testing the support for like the major currencies versus the dollar with the euro and the pound. We could go sideways, I think, over the next month or two as we head into September to see how lockdowns do or do not start to occur, you know, with the variants. Sure. And if they do. I can I would I wouldn't doubt that you see the stock market rally until October. We have almost like a 1987 situation happening right now. Because except back then we still had high employment but it wasn't that high. We were coming out of high employment from a decade of that. You know, things were getting better then at that point. But interest rates were super high then. You know, yeah. so now we don't have high interest rates. So yeah. I think that I think we're going to see a lot of volatility come the fall. I'd be very careful with the currencies right now, except for the Australian dollar. I'm a bear on that. That's the one I, I have to say. Keep on selling that. Um, yeah. The U.S. dollar rand, buy that, you know, versus most currency crosses. Now, the U.S. dollar Canada has been in a nice correction to the upside over the past couple months after being in a bear market for over a year. I think we capped out a couple of weeks ago. I think unless we can see, take out that high from about a week and a half ago, any time like soon, I, I would see us starting to drift back towards support and see that market really okay. tank. So that's another one where I see dollar, you know, that trend staying intact. But the euro and the pound, I think, are very sideways. You know, I mean, the only thing I could see that would really give the pound a lift would be if we get oil back to get up to 100, which is my price target in the longer term, you know, that might still spark some strength there, whereas the euro would be, and now there's divergence there. The euro could be going down versus the dollar and the pound could be going up versus the dollar. And I think that is the future as we head into the fall. So we're gonna have some wild, I think we're gonna be looking at some really weird correlations come October and November for the holidays. Nice, and I, I agree pretty much with, you know, the fundamental take of, um, the, at least the possibility and maybe not the possibility being factored into the market to the degree that I think it might 
uh, that should be. Um, you know, things are flying in Florida, but I tell you, man, as somebody that's vaccinated and I have small kids, it's affecting financial decisions you make, at least on like, you know, we have concerts mm -hmm. going around. And I said, should I really be going to a concert with, you know, young kids that can't get vaccinated and 20,000 people? I'm not quite sure I'm mm -hmm. there yet. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'm right. living my life. It's a different deal. Uh, but going to parks, not quite sure I'm there yet with the numbers in Florida. You're and then the you just get one. into it. Right. Right. Yeah, you know, so even if there aren't the, the, the government mandated shutdowns, it's still impacting when you get to the levels you have. And then we are at risk, mm -hmm. man, some of the hospitals down here, unfortunately, um, mm -hmm. of hitting some levels that are pretty scary stuff. So that could impact things. Right. And we got a lot of jobs to make up, man. And we got a lot of time um, mm -hmm. that we've passed and we haven't made up those jobs. So I, I agree. We got some volatility. And that's a potential. key thing. If the job numbers continue to, if, even if they stay flat, that's not a good thing. By now, sure. this, the perception we all had would be that as we start to open up, things yep. would start to get better. That totally. number doesn't change. That's going to start, especially when you have PPI and stuff going up. It's things like yeah. that. So, Quite a battle, all right, right? Always Rising a pleasure, prices. my friend. All right, man. Teddy, we appreciate the update. We appreciate the conversation, man. We look forward to talking to you next week. Sounds good. Take care. Okay. Have a great one, man. Folks, check them out. Every trading day, forex-trading-unlock.com. We'll be right back to finish up the show. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Markets can rise and fall like the tides. Subscribe to Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, and you too can ride the wave. Basil Chapman is an authority in technical analysis. His Chapman Wave trading system has been helping traders identify trends and capitalize on momentum in the markets since 1984. TFNN invites you to test Basil's proprietary Chapman Wave trading methodology with a monthly subscription to the opening call newsletter for only $149. Your subscription to the opening call comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee, as well as daily market updates on key indexes, stocks, and commodities. Ride the wave! Sign up for the opening call risk-free today. Introducing Primal Edge. Today, it's even more important to take a supplement that complements your health. Primal Edge is specifically formulated to boost your immune system and help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Our early ancestors found all their nutritional requirements in the wild environment. But today our food sources don't contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients that we need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based, vitamins, minerals, fatty and amino acids in an easy to use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated humic and fulvic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They've been called miracle molecules because like sunlight, air and water, without them life cannot exist. That's right, Ellen. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every morning. morning. Primal Edge, just $89 exclusively at tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, folks. We have the S&Ps down by six points, quite a little 15-minute bar, putting on a five-minute bar to see the action. We have slid into negative prices, basically, for the entirety of the 25 minutes the market's been open. Tech stocks, a little bit of a bounce off the bottom there. Make it down to about 14,900. We're trading at 14,951. Uh, just touching on some of what Teddy talked about, folks, bringing it to the market. There's no reason why this is even controversial. I don't get it at all. Please, if you have the ability to go out there and get vaccinated, Please do. It is safe and effective. All right. There's a lot of bad information out there, unfortunately. Now, this is countrywide. OK, you talk about the cases, you talk about the hospitalizations. Um, you know, Teddy talks about Florida. It seems like it's rocketing. But it's not even apparent to most people in terms of where the hospitals are. You know, I have somebody in my household that works in the hospital, OK, as a respiratory therapist. All right. You're talking about 8000 people hospitalized in the state of Florida alone. OK, now, yes. Deaths, thank goodness. That is the thing that matters most, of course, okay? Not elevating to any substantial level just yet. But man, if hospitals start filling up, folks, you will see restrictions, okay? Even DeSantis himself cannot have people not able to be hospitalized that are sick. That's not gonna happen. They're harsh numbers. We're back almost to January numbers. And this thing just skyrocketed from 1,800 to about 8,000 folks over the period of one month. And we are bumping up against these highs at a time. I mean, just not good information there in terms of what you want to look towards. Tie it back to the market. And I agree. You could have some volatility in a big way, folks. When you get the market basically pricing in uh, a lot of greatness in the future. We got Fed Day coming up. We got a meeting ending at 2 o'clock with an announcement. A press conference at 2.30. Not anything surprising. But over the next two, three months, once those benefits run out in September, and we haven't made up the jobs if prices are still persisting at a high level. And if we start getting some of these lockdowns, folks, and Florida might be ahead of the curve, but we might not be the only state um, that has this happen, as we know. But Florida, some harsh numbers out there for the hospitalizations. That's something to keep an eye on because, man, those hospitals fill up and it's happening, folks. You may see some restrictions and the market will not like it if that becomes a real threat in the future. All right. Thanks for tuning in, folks. Stay tuned. And don't forget, you can still attend Basil's webinar coming up. It's starting right now in the Tiger Shop. You can still find that under the Services tab on the TFNN homepage. Thanks so much for tuning in, folks. we got to replay this hour because Basil's doing his webinar live. we got Fast Market live at 11, Larry live at 12, Steve Rhodes, Dave White, and we got, uh, I guess, Larry Pesavento this afternoon for Tom.